All right, guys, let's do the last 10 MCQs of this physics section. So we have, what is the amount of heat released when the temperature of 5.2 grams of iron nail changes it from this much to this much? Now you guys need to just calculate the change in temperature over here. Just find out the difference. You've got the speed, uh, specific heat capacity. All you need to do is just find out the heat. 2 is equal to MC delta T. Remember, so M is 5.2, C is 4.44, 4, and delta T is whatever you calculate, just get the answer out of it. Take it. 102. In thermodynamics, a process in which no heat enters or leaves the system, it's adiabatic. Heat ki baat tabhi ho adiabatic. Now, which of the following is not correct? Evaporation does produce cooling. Evaporation and boiling takes place at all temperatures. No, that's not true. Boiling does not take place at all temperatures. It only takes place at the boiling point. A man moves uh, with twice the speed of uh, sound waves towards the stationary of the source. So basically, they have the source right over here, sitting here, and this is a man moving with the speed of TV towards the source. Now, he's just they're just asking us the apparent frequency, which will happen to that as compared to the real frequency. The formula that we use is this one, right? Because whenever you're moving towards the source, it's always observer upon the source. So observer is moving towards, so the answer has to be bigger, so it has to be a positive sign. So it's Observer velocity plus the actual velocity plus the velocity of sound divided by because the source is stationary, it's just gonna be the speed of sound. So we already know that observer actually has a speed thrice of the speed of sound. The three V plus V, which is four V over V, which cancels out, you just are left with four. So it's four times of actual frequency. The applied frequency, four times of actual frequency is amplified by four times. Okay, moving on. The electrostatic force between two charged spheres, X and Y double, what could explain the situation? Now, how can a charge actually double? If you just look at this formula, we're just talking about the force actually. How can it double? Either you double one of these two charges or you make this a one over and over two. Only then can the force be doubled. So the charge on one sphere has doubled. So yep, that's the answer option. A is correct, okay? Charge on only one sphere has doubled because force and charges are directly proportional. According to Bohr atomic model, a circle of an allowed radius is allowed, uh, is provided to an electron. Moving on, what is classified as nuclear fission? Fission is the breakdown of heavier molecules into smaller molecules, releasing a lot of energy, right? Yep, heavy into lighter, releasing energy. 108, which describes why plastic comb that has been pulled through hair becomes negatively charged. Always remember, guys, it's always the electrons that move. It's never the protons that can be transferred. Because protons are always inside the nucleus, they never get transferred. Now, it's because of the electrons. Now, why is it positive? Because of loss of electrons, simple as that. It's because positive due to the deficiency in the negative charges. 109, a spaceship traveling at a very high speed. What effect would be noted by the stationary observer? So, Time dilation and contraction, especially the theory of relativity, are they? The time dilation method is going to run slower, okay, and contraction length. Yeah, option A is correct. Okay, time dilation game is going to speed slows down. Time slows down, sorry. Time slows down. A 4 kg ball on a string is swung on a horizontal circle at the speed of 3.5 meters per second. Tension is 51. What is the radius of the circle traced out by the ball? Now we just need to calculate the radius in this particular case. So how do we do that? So basically just look at it. This is 51. This is the tension. You can calculate the centripetal force over here using 51 cos of theta. Yep, you definitely calculated that as well. Now once you have that calculated, all you need to do is just find out the radius, right? Now you already have the vertical component over here. Wait, not vertical component. Just one second. They they want to calculate what? What is the radius? Oh, okay. So they want to calculate the radius. Now, we already know this uh, particular force, which is 50 cos of theta, no? 51 cos of 50, sorry. Cos of 50. Up, because it's a circular motion, we can use this formula and we spread over R. We have the mass. Yep, we do. We have the velocity. Velocity is calculated just to, no, no, wait. It's, yeah, it's given 3.5 and radius needs to be calculated. The force has been calculated as well. Just read this and just calculate just rearrange it to get the answer. Turns out to be 1.5 meter. But it's very difficult to do this question without a calculator. This pretty much sums it up. We are done with all the physics and videos. Thank you so much and thank you for listening and sticking by for so long. Yeah,